Is that? Yeah. Okay. Let's see, what else? I was kind of hoping that Amazon was going to be ready, you know, immediately. But apparently, Amazon doesn't think like that. Ah, nope, still being processed. Okay, well, that might make this session get cut a little bit short. But let's see what else can we do here. Got a GitHub account. Curl is a program that allows you to put in a URL and get back whatever that URL would give you. I just did that to confirm that I didn't already have anything installed on this virtual machine like that. Now if I do, there we go. Okay, so what I just did, the process you just saw me go through, installed the Apache web server onto my local machine here. And now what I'll do is I will... I will install PHP. And now, if I go here, see now. Notice that by putting in localhost into the web browser, I'm saying this machine, the machine that I'm on. So I can still build a functional website right here on my own computer without even having access to a remote server. Now I think that I have PHP set up as well. Now the way that I can test that is first of all I have to go into the directory where the where the documents for this server are. So somewhere there's a document that has it works written in it and I've got to find that. I think it's in Vera www and there it is. So this is it. And you see that if I change this and I refresh this page you can see that I know that I'm editing the right document. So great. So let's go ahead and edit a PHP document. I'm just going to confirm that PHP is installed. And I will know that. There we go. Okay, good. So PHP is installed. All right. So we at least have some progress made there. I think I set this virtual machine up for 20 gigs hard disk space and I think 4 gigs of RAM. It would work just fine with 2 gigs of RAM. Ah, got an email. No, it's the same one. I just didn't click on it. Okay, so let me guess. This probably still doesn't work yet. No, nope. it's probably not going to work today. So we're just going to code here for now, and then tomorrow I'm probably going to... Uh, well, the reason why is because any PHP code will execute if PHP is installed, so there's no reason to do PHP info, which is going to reveal all sorts of information that I really don't need to see, when all I really want to see is that it works. All right, so let's see, where do I want to go from here? I think I want to set up a GitHub repository, so let's do that. All right, I'm already logged in. Um, now, GitHub is a site that allows you to keep your source code on it, more than source code really, but primarily source code, and it allows you to very easily, let's say you have multiple servers and, they, and they're all doing the same thing. Well, GitHub is a nice way to have all those servers pulling the exact same source code from the same place. And then if you make a change to your source code, you just go ahead and you make that change once and it automatically goes to all of your different sites. 
<laughs> figures. That's that's funny though. But yeah, not much I can do about the fact that Amazon isn't giving me that same courtesy. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new repository. Now there's probably something about my sign up they didn't like. Maybe it was the fact that I had to close my web browser and reopen it and go through the sign up again. I don't know. All right, so let's see. I want to call this repository. I don't know. Um, we'll just call it live stream startup for now. Yeah, I'll, anyone can see it. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. Yes, you you want to select this because I'm going to want to, I'm going to want to do what's called cloning. You, you'll see what that is in a minute. Just remember, yes, you want to check that box. That's all fine. Create repository. Okay, cool. Now here's what I want you to see. Right now, this repository I just created, all it has is a README file in it, and the README file just has a description of it. Now, this code repository can have subdirectories and, and all the source code that I wanted to have and the first thing I want to do here is I want to actually grab this repository and place it onto my server here so I'm going to create a directory for it and I believe the command is just simply this git clone and then the URL what URL the URL that's right here I just copy and paste that URL after the git clone command and all right, I have to install git, so I do that by app get install git. Yes. The other reason you want to use a code repository is that if you make a mistake, you have a history of all of your changes and you can you can go back to another point in the past. You can also do what's called branching where if you if you get your project to a point that you're happy with it but you think oh I, I could actually build a totally different project from here you can branch your project into two totally separate repositories and and work on each separately and there's all kinds of cool things you can do there you can even switch branches you can create a, a branch for developing it a branch for testing it a branch for production and so on alright so here now I have git now that command should work and there we go All right. So now we see, yeah, I have a second live stream startup directory, I always forget about that. All right, so now we see that we have this readme.md file, and it's, it's the exact same file you just saw over here. And now I know that I have the ability to synchronize between here and here. So let's see, let's go ahead and create a file. First, I'm going to move this directory a bit. I'm just going to reclone it here. Okay, there we go. All right, so I just undid the second directory. In fact, I don't need that. Um, okay, so now I have the directory live stream startup, and I can see that it works by going here. And there's the README file, and it wants to open it in Notepad. I don't need to do that. The point is, it works fine. All right, so let's go ahead and try creating a test file here, um, just to make sure everything works. Now, I add that file like this. I give it a, a message here. That's what the commit-m is for. It's just giving it a message. I can say whatever I want there. And the last thing is it wants, it wants me to run these two commands, which I'll do. Just git config global user.email carl at livestreamstartup.com and user.name. And that's just so it can, so if you have more than one person working on a project, you want to know who's committing what changes. There's also a great Git tutorial right on GitHub. Let me show that to you real quick. Let's see, explore, where is it? I wonder if it shows it to me when I'm logged in. 
Yeah, it's called TriGit, in fact, here. Let me just Google for it. There you go. Is that it? This is it, right here. No, that's not it. Yeah, this is it. Okay, so it's it's right here. This is a great Git tutorial that just remember that URL and paste it into the stream. <laughs> yeah, mental note, I can't cut and paste from from my virtual machine there. And just so you guys know, that URL won't work. I was trying to set up Twitch earlier and I never finished it. So, all right, anyways, there's the URL. I don't have my virtual machine configured to cut and paste from the virtual machine to you guys. So just, there you go. It's also the... Well, there you go. All right, so now let's see. Um, now what I want to do is I want to actually commit the changes that I just did to the main GitHub repository. And right off the top of my head, I don't remember the, the command to do that. So I'm just going to look it up real quick. <laughs> 